There are countless movies you can watch on Valentine's Day with that special someone. Titanic, Pretty Woman, 10 Things I Hate About You, Not You Twilight, Love Actually, and basically everyone's personal favorite, The Notebook. Romantic movies that lift you off your feet and make you remember how magical the cinematic expression of love can be. And for those who are spending Valentine's Day alone, there's a whole nother selection. Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind, Closer, Gone Girl if your ex was batshit crazy, Blue Valentine, films that examine the brutal truths of relationships and the psychological turmoil within them, kicking you down to your knees instead of sweeping you off your feet, leaving you with a different and more realistic impression of love. And then, there's her. A film that has stuck with me since the day I first saw it, on an old TV with a broken DVD player that could only play films in black and white. And even without color, which is one of the film's greatest strengths, it conveys everything you need to know through its writing, performances, and music. However, when I saw her for the first time in color, believe me when I say that no film has come close to replicating the feeling that this masterpiece gives me every time I watch it. Within the first 15 minutes, we're told that the main character, Theodore Twombly, is a man who once loved, but is now lost, and thinks he can never find love again. The opening monologue reveals that he's writing this beautiful piece for a couple's 50th wedding anniversary from his office workspace, which makes the later reveal about his ongoing divorce all the more painful when you know that he has to write these letters every day to people who are happier than he is, all while he's conflicted and avoiding leaving the person who made him happiest. We're also shown how far we are in the future. Printers printing handwritten letters, small devices that read emails and play specific music while also being able to access chat rooms to instantly fulfill one's pleasurable desires. Almost as if the instant gratification that we know today has reached its absolute limits in this scarily, not so distant future. And the thing is, after these first 15 minutes, all of this is pushed aside. We're introduced to the main character, immersed in the world in which he lives in, and finally, we are introduced to Samantha. And for both us and Theodore, she is something completely new to have come out of this world. Theodore meeting Samantha marks a significant change in his life and in the film's mood. Whereas the day before he walked home in a cold, blue, melancholic evening, the next day is bright, happy, and vibrant, almost identical to the memories were shown of him with his ex-wife Catherine, meaning that Theodore has rediscovered something special. Yet the disturbing thought that Samantha comes from an infinite digital world remains at the back of our minds until the film's final minutes. How many others? Six hundred forty-one. During this film's entire runtime, the story isn't the only thing that keeps you invested. The gorgeous cinematography by Hoyte van Hoytema has brilliant pinks and reds, but also dark and gloomy blues. Each scene is perfectly lit, and even if you watch this film in black and white, you can still appreciate its cinematography. The score by Arcade Fire couldn't have been a better fit for the deeply personal and enthralling emotions this film throws at you. From a calm and simple track like Song on the Beach, to my personal favorite, Photograph, which perfectly captures everything I love about this film, a building melody that grows in such a passionate way and weaves into one that's even more complex, just like Theodore and Samantha's relationship. This is what boosts the incredible performances from Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson even more. But that's not to say that the cast is completely overshadowed. In fact, their versatility is shown quite well in this film, with Rooney Mara having played Elizabeth Salander, a gritty and unflinching character in David Fincher's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo just a couple years prior, to now playing a much more down-to-earth character in a smaller, yet affecting role. Although Scarlett Johansson never physically appears on screen, her performance of Samantha is mesmerizing enough for us to feel like she's right there. For her to be able to convey so much with just her voice is amazing, when you consider that a little less than a year later she would be acting almost entirely with her body, playing a silent being from another world devoid of emotion and under the skin. 
The chemistry between her and Phoenix is so gripping to the point where we as an audience form an attachment with her almost as strong as Theodore's. Which brings me to Joaquin Phoenix's performance in this film. Phoenix is one of the best actors of the generation, and the first time I saw her, I didn't even recognize him until his name appeared in the end credits. The man engulfs himself in the flames of every captivating performance he brings to the screen, and leaves us feeling like we sat too close to the sun. In the span of a year, he went from playing a traumatized, scarred for life, World War II veteran in a post-war society who was cured by the only friend that believed that those scars could heal, to playing a lonesome man who wanders in a cold, not-so-distant future who at first debates whether he's insane for developing feelings for the voice of an operating system in his head, that his loneliness eclipses his ability to have rational feelings, but then finds that if that very technology can offer him the warm embrace of true love he once felt, he's finally happy. Until the one who shows him how to love again learns how to love, and evolves into something greater than both of them could ever imagine. And in the moment she says goodbye, Theodore finally lets go of his past through a letter that, this time, he writes for himself, and looks out onto a new future, understanding the undeniable importance of human relationships, and what it means to love. All of this because he met her. So if you're spending today with that special someone, or with friends, cherish the moment. Cherish the joy you have, and if you're spending today alone, I'm glad that we could share this moment together. I'll see you after the credits.